The latest news we have on the LIBOR scandal involves Canadian regulators uh, having a look at everything. Uh, they're uh, apparently talking with UBS and Royal Bank of Scotland in the UK is also uh, being mentioned. But actually over here, the perspective we're looking at is, is what does it mean for US banks? And the big three who are involved are Bank of America, JP Morgan and Citi, all, of, all three of which have their own issues to deal with. And Agnes, you, you looked at this and you looked at it from a particular aspect, which is, is this actually making their stock perform even worse than I mean, other yesterday firms? they had a bit of a tumble on this yeah. and I think it was kind of playing catch up. The U.S. markets were closed on July 4th when Bob Diamond was testifying yep. in the U.K. And so what we saw is, you know, a pretty big tumble. And I think it's one of these things, too, like, you know, these three banks are all dealing with their own issues. And it's almost a reminder with these big mega money center banks. It's like, oh, here's another thing I yeah. have to look at, like LIBOR. Why, I didn't think I had to worry about yeah. something like LIBOR. So they're, they're the big three over here who, who, yeah. uh, who uh, form part of the group of 16 that, that do this. Yeah. And they're down, what, 3 or 4% yesterday, which when well, you could argue is simply just uh, investors thinking, okay, if Barclays paid 450 yeah. million, what do these guys have to pay? And we'll factor that exactly. in. Exactly. I mean, I but think there's all of that is going on as well. But I think like what we're seeing is it's just you know you know again just to pull back from after 2008, everybody was trying to grapple like yeah. what do I have to worry about? Okay, subprime mortgages, legacy uh, costs, etc., yeah. etc. Et and then and now we're just getting this new wave. I mean, J.P. Morgan, it was a trading loss. Okay, here's this part of J.P. Morgan I, I didn't really pay attention to before. Yeah, now they've got the money. They've got this, this potential budding scandal about investment funds. They were setting, although that's somewhat old news. Yeah. And then there's the market manipulation, the energy they're being looked exactly. at for. So again, I think it's this reminder: everybody is starting to look about, like, you know, do these models make sense? What, do, what, how do I value these companies? Yeah. And I think what's what, what's emerging here is that there are a lot of things that I had not, you know, that an investor may not have considered before that actually could, mm. you know, have a, 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 a serious impact on evaluation. Yeah. yeah exactly. If, if we, I mean, if we look at the the, the metric you're looking at, which is book value, yeah. so which essentially the breakup value of a bank, assuming yeah. that they could sell the parts easily. Exactly. And all, th well, certainly two banks, Citi and B of A, have been pretty depressed for a while. But yeah. I think you and said, it's like a deep discount. Yeah. Like where, where are they now? So they're 60% like below book value. Below book value. Okay. Whereas and I JP think Morgan is around 27%. But okay. again, I, I think, you know, it's this issue that this has been going on for a while. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, one thing I think people are willing to be like, okay, this is, you know, we're going to get through this period. Yeah. We're going to, you know, wring out all the excesses from the boom and then we'll kind of get back to normal. Yeah. And I think what we're, co we're seeing now four years into this is, when is normal coming yeah. back? So and you, you, is it coming? You don't know what, what else is coming down the pike in terms of, of lawsuits or whatever else. Earnings, of course, are also an issue. City and B of A, I think, uh, for the first quarter and most of last year, weren't getting much more than 5 or 6 percent returns, yeah. which is below their cost of capital. Exactly. Right? So again, we're looking at you know their bread and butter, credit market activity, yep. equity activities, all down. Yeah, it's all quarter. slow, and M and A is pretty bad. Yeah. And that's not the only thing that banks are looking for, of yeah. course. But uh, for the for those big but mega it's banks. it's one more thing that you have. Whereas to if you if you look at the less complex, that's called we'll call them simple banks. But Wells Fargo, for example, right. another one of the banks you're following. Which is doing well. And how's, I mean, that's that's where that's Trading, it's trading one, well above book yeah, value. Yeah, almost 50% above book value. Yeah. And you can even see it in daily activities when the big money center banks get hit, Wells yeah. Fargo typically outperforms. Yeah. Because again, I think people can kind of get their head around like what is Wells Fargo? Oh, okay, yeah. it's a bank that like, you know, lends money to mm. consumers yeah. and I mean it's, it's it, there's not a huge derivatives book, right. I mean it's an easier bank to understand. Uh, exactly. It certainly feeds into the whole are these banks too big to fail or not? I think libel's probably not quite the thing that should kill them. Then again, no, you know, maybe maybe one of these things ends up being the straw that breaks the camel's back. Right. Um, okay, well, we'll keep an eye on that with you next week, Agnes. Uh, and we've got the bank results starting next week with JP Morgan. So we'll be keeping an eye on that and come back with us next week for more breaking views.